is it possible, the imperial power always asks itself, is it possible to be a good imperialist? And what happens to individuals when they leave the centre of their world and go to the far-flung provinces? Oh, when I joined the Eagles, as it might be yesterday, I kissed a girl at Clusium before I marched away. The relationship between the Romans and Britons was explored in The Eagle of the Ninth. Based on the book by Rosemary Sutcliffe, it tells the story of the angst-ridden soldier Marcus Aquila, who comes to Britain hoping to discover the truth about the disappearance of his father's legion. In his journey to the dark heart of this wild province, he witnesses the horrors carried out in the name of the imperial ideology he holds dear. But rather than exalting in his colleague's bloodlust, Marcus feels the pain of his enemies. Wattle and Daub huts are easily rebuilt. Salted fields will bear again in three years, but not all the time in eternity will bring back the young men of the tribe. To suddenly see Britons as being the downtrodden, those who are desperately trying to sustain their own culture within what has become an immensely dominant imperial culture spreading out from elsewhere overseas, uh, suddenly makes you think about, you know, what it might have been like to be an Indian or an African under the British Empire. Heaps of British literature was concerned with how could you manage the Indian colonial encounter? What did it do to you as an individual? And so one of the things you're reworking in these Roman examples, written by us, is precisely that form of dilemma. What happens to a Roman when he is here, not in Rome? In Marcus's case, his friendship with a British slave seemed to raise the prospect of a partnership between invader and invaded. My father and two brothers died. My mother also. My father killed her before the legionaries broke through. She wished it so. In the 20